Gobble, gobble, gobble. It's time for the holiday episodes. So let's get into it. Welcome, everybody. It's your host, Ganya. With me, as always, my partner in crime, the Null Dog. How are you? I'm good. I'm well. I'm doing well. How's it going? Excellent. Excellent. You look <laughs> like you're in a very decorative uh, home. Yeah, I am. I'm in a holiday even. Yeah, I'm in a family home full of love, love and and uh, dysfunction. Yeah, yeah, dysfunction. Lots of dysfunction. Two hours of nonstop dysfunction. So an hour and 43 minutes, but (laughs) sweet, sweet, sweet runtime. We we love that runtime. Okay. Um hundred and three minutes is perfect. A hundred and three minutes? Yep. That's what it was? Okay, yeah, that's good. Runtime, 1995, right? 1995. And directed by Jodie Foster, Clarice yes. Sterling herself. Yeah. Is this her first, second? Well, well, uh, yeah, it's murky. You know, I, I looked up her page, and I think this is technically her first movie. Um, didn't she do Little Man Tate? Yes. Was that before this? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't she, know. She did a few movies. It didn't feel like she went really full bore into the directorial side of things, but um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm here for this one. So are you? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's got a good cast. It's got a lot of good actors in it. A lot of well-known good actors. And is one of my all time, not all time favorites, but one of the fun actors of the eighties, it's got Steve Gutenberg in this. The goot, the yes. goot, the goot. In it. And it's got Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. himself. Iron Man is yeah. in this. Yeah. This is our second Gutenberg movie. I mean, yeah. he's, he's going to have to cope on the, the hall of fame soon. I don't know about that. But we'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Gutenberg goes on the hall of fame yet, but yeah, we don't have to talk not. about that one. Maybe Definitely not for this one, but no, no, gosh, no, not for this one. <laughs> No, no, all right, not at so, all. so my first thought, and yeah. it, it just distracted me so much to start the movie, but the Santana cover, oh, it was awful. And okay. you know, Evil Ways is a great song, but it just yeah. or was it was Evil Ways. Yeah, it wasn't Black Magic Woman, but God, that cover was horrendous. It just was like, get past this, please. I don't need the opening credits to be this long. Well, it's another one of those movies where you they gotta fill it in with all, you know, mm-hmm. everybody in the beginning, just like speed. Yep. So, uh, but that, that part, that part was fine by me. It's the rest of the movie that, <laughs> that I have a problem with. If that's the part that bother you, then man, okay. Okay. Right. Well, you don't love a good going home story. I do. I do okay. love a good going okay. home story. I okay. Just, so, I don't. I don't want a movie where it's like two. Hour, I'm sorry, an hour and three hour and four minutes of nonstop dysfunction. That's yeah. all it is. It's just nonstop dysfunction. And right off the bat, you get Claudia, who's played by Holly Hunter, and she loses her job. And, okay, I I could tell right away she's about to lose her job. And then she starts, she makes out with her boss, which is really awkward. And for that scene, I'm like, very awkward. okay, so this is what I'm in for. So that's how the movie (laughs) starts. She loses her job and and she's got to go home for the holidays. And she has this weird makeout session with her boss. So trying to save her job, I guess, was was that the it was kind of odd yeah you just don't really know what you're dealing with and she's painting and then, then she's losing her job and yeah, yeah. trying to force is herself that, on her boss it was very odd yeah. yeah is that how people save their jobs i i don't know i don't work in the art community so i don't either so <laughs> if anybody works in the art community no, just yeah, please <laughs> just let us know let us know if that's how it happens in the art community i'm kidding um claire danes Claire Danes is in this movie, yeah. and I thought she was going to have a bigger part, a bigger role in this, and she doesn't. Yeah, two scenes, really, I think, is, is about the extent of... I, I like how they include her, but, like, don't include her. Like, it's like it's like you can't afford an actor, and you so you write them a really small part where they just have to disappear for the entire movie. I did like that. She just only pops up again on the phone. <laughs> on the phone, yeah. That's acting at its finest to me you don't even have to just literally saying your lines into a phone probably not even anyone on the other line i feel like they could have given her a bigger part and she could have been the heart of this movie i really do um yeah because she just has this she was like the only calm one in the whole (laughs) movie and i was like okay let's get more claire danes on here and she was never there so whatever yeah it um now that i think about it you're right It, it is a lot of chaos and not a lot of um character building i guess uh where like you know had i think they given 
her a little bit more backstory of like how she was raising her daughter on her own. And, you know, that kind of explains why the, the daughter is more maternal, <laughs> like taking care of her mother who can't seem to keep her shit together. Right. Um, would have, it would have made a little bit more sense. And you're right, actually, maybe if her daughter was there, it was almost like they, the vehicle to her losing her virginity was that the mom wasn't going to be there. And so yeah. they just couldn't have her a part of the story, but who doesn't go home for the holidays with their mom and to see their grandparents and aunts and uncles. I don't know. How old was she? She was 18? 16. So, oh, yikes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know. So my first thought when, when RDJ actually shows up was like, can Iron Man save the day? Because I think up until that point, like the movie kind of drags. Yeah. Um, it's like just really downer, you know, not a lot of comedy. There's the forced comedy of, you know, the making out with the boss and, and then, you know, the lady on the plane, which that lady, I feel like is a character actor in a lot of things. I I've seen her but, before. Yeah. yeah. I don't um but it just yeah it's it's very um boring i don't know to start until yeah until it RGG drags there. it drags yeah it just and then he gets drags. there and that's where i feel like it kind of takes off because then you have that dynamic of the family interaction and you know the the support that you have with your siblings to like i don't know have those eye rolling moments with your parents you're just like oh my god these you know i i can't i don't know how we came from these people sure Okay, I, I'm just full disclosure. I like Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. in this as Tommy was so annoying. It was like he just went overboard and he would not stop. He's taking pictures of his sister while she's under the covers, taking the covers off, taking her pictures of her in her underwear. Clearly, he takes a picture of her naked and sends it to his friend, Leo Fish. It's just... It's too much. Like, take it down a little bit, right? But, I mean, in the beginning, once he's introduced, I was like, okay, this is going to be cool. It's going to be good. It, but he never tones it down. He never tones it down for me. So yeah. I didn't, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't care for, for him, for his character in this movie. Interesting. Um, I like him no matter what. I, I feel like he plays that wild eccentric you know just to a t and that's one of the reasons why you got iron man this is this is him being him um it is yeah. very over the top and um overdone in some scenes but fun fact so first fun fact oh of, fun of fact ding here we go um, <laughs> he admitted to using heroin while shooting this film so some uh, of that erotic uh, there like, we go <laughs> if you look at some of the differences in the scenes and really really focus on him which is hard not to because he has a lot of lines and it's like just him being scattered um i mean it it makes sense <laughs> like so yeah he admitted to being a little bit of a challenge and um might have been under the influence of a few of those scenes <laughs> Did you notice, um, th there's a, quite a few, like you said, in this movie, it's like everybody was like, oh, Jodie Foster's directing a movie, let's be in it. I mean, David Strathern plays the like the sad sack uh, heating guy who, you know, oh, yeah. used to know her <laughs> yeah. and he only yeah. gets one scene and like kind of seems like he's trying to invite himself to dinner, but she's just like, cool, good to see you. I um, liked him. He's a pretty good scene, though. Yes. I, I would have liked to see more of that guy. Yeah, you know, no, I don't need more sad sack. Like, this is already... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Not right. enough, but I all like right. the actor, but I just think yeah. it was funny that they got um Amy Yazbek made Marion herself. Um, yes, I saw like, her. You know, the the popular oh. high school girl who yes, you know, still doing well. So the old friend. Yeah. 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 Um uh at Leo Fish, I, I forget what his name is. Uh Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. He was I actually liked his character until the very end yes I, I i liked his character throughout the movie how you didn't know if he was in a relationship with uh with tommy mm -hmm. right because it, this whole time i thought okay that's that's his partner but i liked his i liked his relationship until the very end where he's basically just coming full strong on onto claudia played by holly hunter i just thought his character took a turn for the worse for me um i just liked him kind of being nice and helpful throughout the whole family that that was um i liked that character and then enter aunt gladdy and gladdy plant lady I yeah love her. did you love her because yeah. i didn't well, i i i loved her, her character. story yeah i loved yeah. her character obviously yeah. like the crazy ant gets is a trope you know it gets done in national lampoons and you know name any other holiday family film but yeah, I, 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 I liked just, it it's a sweet story it's 
There's no heart. Okay, no, I take that back. I was, cur- no, there is heart in this movie, but it's like 95% dysfunction and 5% mm. heart. Yeah. And that to me was a little too much. If I'm going to watch a holiday movie, I kind of need some more heart in it. But mm. Aunt, Aunt Gladdy, okay. going back to Aunt, going back to Aunt Gladdy, that was like the only part that I chuckled when she was in the car and, and she she farted, or as my son says, she yeah. flapped. Yeah, right? <laughs> very nice. So um, that was that was funny. I, I chuckled, and then but the whole dinner table, going to the the dinner table scene, mm-hmm. she confesses her love to her brother-in-law is yeah. that her brother yeah, right her brother-in-law. Hmm. it was so random and so weird that i didn't i was like what yeah okay but she was losing her mind and this was we're talking what 50 years ago you know assuming they've been married close to 50 years 40 years ago uh, mm-hmm. 1990 and you know yeah so she's losing her mind she's remembering and recalling a a, a time in you know which she felt love and she's at thanksgiving i don't know i, I went with it I, I i thought it was it added to, obviously to the awkwardness of you know you're sitting around the table i think that's one of the best scenes because you've just got holly hunter playing off her amp telling this story all while making yeah. kind of commentary towards it like no no let her finish like okay. let's let's hear this out i liked it i i, I enjoyed aunt good Gladdy. i'm glad you enjoyed aunt Gladdy. however i will agree with you on dylan mcdermott um first off leo fish give a guy a better name man come on like I, I, <laughs> but it's so memorable what's your name leo fish yeah and they play on it as if you're supposed to i don't know make it like it's supposed to make sense but i i just yeah. don't get it he's for me the single-handedly the worst character because at the very end of the movie like the forcing himself on holly hunter at the doorstep when they're trying to drop off food it just it was weird it was yeah really really weird and uncomfortable like he like grabs her at one mm-hmm. point and you're like okay i don't i don't follow <laughs> and to your point yeah like in the beginning of the movie it's really great he's interacting with the family and he's yeah you know, he's a sweet guy throughout yeah. the whole movie he turns into this really really forceful weirdo at the end yeah um okay so enter steve gutenberg oh I I was really hoping he would shine in this movie and he just had this frown throughout the whole movie and his facial expression is what I felt like while watching this movie like there was <laughs> there was just there was nothing to smile okay. about in this movie but he was just kind of like his he was always looking like this like that just really pouty and he, he obviously didn't want to be there especially because he didn't get along with Tommy, Robert Downey Jr.'s mm-hmm. uh, character. So, um, yeah, he, there was, yeah, this was very good for him. So I, I really wanted to like him, but I, I, could, I couldn't like him. Yeah, I, even though I have problems with some of the, the things in it, like the brother-sister relationship's kind of weird. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I get that they're close, but like, I don't know, what are they, twins? Like, are they supposed to like share this bond that like, there's very weird interactions and moments with them, to your point, the taking the photo of her while she, but I guess it's like, you're picking on your your sibling. I don't know. Like, it, I don't I know when you- pose. Yeah, I, mean... I, I don't know about that necessarily, but there, there are sweet moments to it. You know, there, sure. there's the, the moment where the dad is talking to, uh, robert's husband who's not there you know and, and congratulates yeah. him and actually you know it's like i think i mean this like i yeah. i appreciated those like sentimental moments where the dad actually like is connecting with holly hunter and telling her the story of you know watching the planes come in and how she was fearless and like kind of giving her that confidence back to like take control of your life like you were the one person that i wasn't worried about here and right. she's yeah. kind of sitting back i don't know ho-hum about her life yeah. So I, I think there are those sentimental moments sprinkled in. There is a lot of chaos and a lot of discomfort, but I think sprinkled in between there, there's there's some sweet moments. Um, I do like the heart in the end. I do like, like you were talking about, the moment where the dad was having this kind of heartfelt moment with Tommy, Robert, Robert Donner Jr.'s character, about him and how he got married and nobody was around there and how he accepted him. I thought that moment was, it, it really stood out among all the chaos. Mm-hmm. And then the other one where she's talking to her, to Claudia about how she was the brave one. Yes, in those moments, I will give that to you. There is heart in that moment, but it wasn't enough for me to say, oh, this movie's great. It just wasn't. Yeah, I, and I'm not going to sit here and say it was great. I think that there are moments scattered in between some really odd 
so it's not really a balanced movie like it, we all have troubles with our family but this one yeah seems to be just like non-stop and um i actually was a little disappointed that the sister didn't make amends and like you know yeah. forgive her that to, again that you know adds to your point of not enough heart like why is she so heartless about it and yeah one of those i guess the runtime maybe would have been better if they would have added just a little bit more you know like maybe understanding that the sister doesn't isn't happy with her brother and sister because they left and she explains it really quick but like you just don't know that until the very end of their conversation so you're like hoping yeah. sister's going to make amends and she goes over to you know apologize and, and you know work it out with her and she just doesn't want to and so yeah. it's kind of tough tough way to end it and, and they had this weird dialogue when she's on the treadmill and she's she's at the house and there he goes she goes the sister goes to claudia you know if i saw you on the in an alley or on the street and if mm. you gave me your number i would throw it away i was like okay it's harsh <laughs> and the, it's harsh yeah it's thanksgiving man huh? so yeah um, we don't get to choose our family and then they say that at some point you know probably yeah yeah we don't, you, yeah, we don't get to see the family we don't have to like each other or something like that you know we're family yeah. yeah and then leo fish ends up with claudia spoilers sort of they sort of end up together because sure. she's on a plane back home and he gets on the plane and he goes we got two hours we don't know what's going to happen but i'm going to fly with you and if that doesn't work out then i can fly back i'm like okay sure i guess not? sure yeah why not they just sit been in like, silence i would have been like i'll just call you when you get home and then we can yeah. talk on the phone and we can work it out like that. It's 1995, man. It's a different time. I suppose. Rating time? Do you want to rate? Yeah, we didn't uh, We didn't discuss ratings. Uh, I, the I only thing I could think of, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go. Yeah. One, I two, was three. turkeys. Uh, I was going to go with lamps because Aunt Gladdy keeps giving the lamps away. Okay, no lamp, no turkeys. We're going to go with lamps. One lamp being just this awful thanksgiving movie and five lamps being just this wonderful thanksgiving movie that everybody wants to watch so uh do you want to go first or me no, go, go first? You, hit me hit me with your sure. awful score okay for me home for the holidays did not hit home i thought it was too dysfunctional not enough heart for me i like the character i like these actors i'm a big robert downey jr fan i tony stark iron man all the way for me this was just too much not enough heart i don't ever want to watch it again and uh i just i don't know i'm sorry i didn't like it i'm gonna go with the one and a half lamps for me sorry wow one and a half lamps yeah 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 i could see it i understand it um i still found myself really enjoying this um it's it's a little rocky so i i'm not gonna say it's my favorite but honestly like thanksgiving films know what my top three really is you know, it's, hard. it's very tough yep um and so for that i'm gonna go with three lamps i think it was solid wow um, okay i i like the heart i like the characters admittedly i'm a holly <laughs> hunter fan i've loved her since the first time i saw raising arizona okay and mrs incredible can do no wrong so um, <laughs> she's a good actress though it's just she is she's a fantastic she's actress just, the movie just didn't it didn't do it for me i don't know i was really upset watching this yeah it's it's kind of a bit scattered here and there good parts yeah. and then parts where you're just like i don't understand why that was necessary but for that I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm giving it still a three i think it's a good movie still it's fun and if you haven't watched it i say enjoy the dysfunction and and check it out sure go ahead watch it if you want a thanksgiving movie which just goes to show there's not a whole lot of thanksgiving movies so i really wanted to i really thought this was going to come through but it didn't so so whatever. stay home for the holidays watch this movie or don't yes. but let us know and we'll catch you next time on fyc film review i've been your host gagne with me as always my partner the Naldar. see you guys there next time bye, bye.